my name is Daniel Flood. Um, I work here as the acting creative production manager. So I'm trying to figure that name out. I only got it as of yesterday. Um, so if you have any questions over the coming weeks regards these applications and the process, I will likely be the person you'll be speaking to. So animate that, the briefing. Um, animate that is one of our many programs here at the Edge, and this is the we're looking at the opportunity to really make a mark as creative professionals around the space with works that kind of exemplify and explore this space. So the first point, yay, is to fashion a compelling experience, which we'll explore that term and unpack it a little bit. Secondly, is to trigger something unexpected. Thirdly, is to plant a lasting memory. What that actually means in the context of a lasting memory and where we're planting it is completely up to you as wonderful creative human beings. And we're really looking forward to seeing what people consider with that. And the aim of this above all else is to animate the edge, which is this building. Okay. So as I said, go over stuff. Um, there will be a tour of the building and I'm hoping to do it about the midway point through the process or at the end. It really depends on how engaged people are looking. If you're all looking like you're falling asleep in about 10 minutes time, we'll go take the walk then and come back for the rest of the talk. So um, the question that will be on most people's minds when they apply for this kind of a project is what is the edge looking for? Which is a very, very good question. First and foremost, we're looking for three installations of varying scales. Now, some of that, by that we could mean absolutely ginormous scale, and we also could mean very tiny. And that also is not necessarily reflective of the financial number attached to each of those applications. Well, it does in one case. The, the big one outside, as you can see, the breezeway is a very large space, but the other two are up for grabs. They will be installed in the space for at least 12 months, which is a whole year, which is pretty cool. Um, that is from the moment it is actually put into the space to the moment it can potentially be taken down. Whether or not it comes down at the end of 12 months is up for discussion. So if a work is kind of integral for it to be up for 18 months, happy to discuss that. But it needs to be a minimum of 12 months. Mostly because, as you can imagine, and to be very mercenary and blunt about it, $10,000 is a big pot of money. So we want to make sure that it's... And also, it's an opportunity for creatives to be represented in a space for 12 months, which, um, being a creative person, that's pretty cool and, and not often. So, something that com combines the arts, sciences and technologies in a wonderful way. We use the word wonderful very specifically. We'd like it to be something that people look at and it does inspire that sense of wonder and awe in them. So it's really about thinking and also with that kind of hybrid practice and that kind of cross-discipline work. So looking at where do art, science and technology meet and how can you explore that. Now, we will freely acknowledge that finding someone who has great skills in arts, science and technology all in one is not necessarily a very common creature in the world. So we are really encouraging collaboration, but we'll come to that. Uh, work that responds to the space. Is, um, it's very easy to recycle a piece of work that you've been planning for the past five years or have had installed somewhere else. What we really are looking for is work that responds to the space and that is idiosyncratic to the space. So that's something to take in mind in your planning and thoughts. And collaboration in the EDGE community. Now, the EDGE community is not necessarily only the people sitting in this room or only the people who come to this building. The EDGE community we like to think of is the entire of Queensland. So if people have say to us, wow, I've got a partner in Cairns, I've got a partner in Bundaberg, and I've got a partner in like the very tip of the top of Queensland. Awesome. We'd love to, know how, we'd love to see that kind of collaboration. Or if you're going, I've got myself and I'm going to bring in the skills I need from across Queensland. Again, really interested. What the edge wants the work to be. So I've been trying to be very specific with these points, just so that everyone's clear, I'm clear, you're clear, everyone's happy. To be site specific. So to really, again, it's reiterating that point that to be idiosyncratic to the space, but we can't emphasize that enough. And also to use the spaces 
in a way that builds the work up and creates something really compelling and interesting. Have a depth of audience engagement. Now, the reason we say that is we would really like it that if an audience member were to see this work, that they're going to stop and, re and look at it and explore it and interrogate it and apply some rigour to it so there is actually more than a fleeting moment of experience with it. That way we are saying to the world at large, whether that be the artistic, science, or technology, technological community, that this work is of worth. And of course it will be, you're all wonderful artists. But it is also that bearing that in mind. Reflect the edge in both space and an idea. That's possibly a grammatical error in that statement. We're looking at the edges of space. We are Queensland's digital culture centre. Our aim is for the 15 to 25 year old market. We tailor to both sides of that age range. And we also are exploring that kind of space where creativity, technology, science and enterprise meet. So the work we're looking for is kind of reflective of that and reflective of this is a community built space and our aim is if this to become a community led space. So bearing that in mind with the creation of the work. To invoke a response from the community. Now I use the word invoke, should your work provoke a response from the community? That will be interesting also. Um, but it's to, we want to see some response to it. We would like to see conversation around it. We'd like people to point at that and go, that made me feel X. So we're looking, moving on from those very kind of introductory concepts. Animate that opportunity. So what are the opportunities presented to us? I'm assuming you've all read the paperwork, so we'll go through it. $10,000 for a work that is situated in the breezeway and or foyer. So we'll go and have a look at those spaces shortly to kind of get an idea of what they are. Secondly, $3,000 for a publicly accessible work somewhere in the edge or on the online platform. When we use the phrase online platform, we are referring to the Edge website, which is a WordPress site built with the BuddyPress plugin. So while it is a website, it has a very strong social networking built into it. And we would really love for people to go, hey, I've got this idea about how I can really interrogate, push and expand that concept of social networking within our structure. Very open to applications that require us to go back to our development team and our designer and make his life interesting. So if anyone's got any web-based works, definitely open into it. And what could be conceived as a booby prize, but is not a booby prize, is the $150 for a publicly accessible work somewhere in the edge or on the online platform. Quite often people say, it's not a lot of money, it's really something less than serious. We are deadly serious about it. Because there's the argument that $10,000 is better than 150, except when you're given $150, you have the freedom to really play. $10,000, you have to pass risk assessments and you're going to have to pass safety inspections and all these other wonderful public artwork nightmares. So um, we're really wanting people to think about that $150. If I weren't a State Library employee, to be honest with you, the $150 is what I'd be thinking about. I'm not just saying that. So the $10,000 commission is open to Australian creatives or teams with members mostly 25 years old or younger. We'd like to reiterate, if you're 25, you're most welcome to enter. If you're 26, find yourself a bunch of 25 or younger to work with. <laughs> We're reflecting that in that in Australia there are many opportunities for artists, but to be able to say this is an opportunity specifically for under 25s to create a installation, site-specific installation work that will be up for 12 months is very rare. That is our decision to stick with 25 and under, and we're very proud of it. Moving on, the $3,150 commissions are open to any Queensland creative specifics, so Victorians, New South Wales people and all those other states cannot apply for those two. And that um, will be open to Queensland creatives or teams mostly 25 years or younger. So we're looking at very much when we say teams, we're hoping for collaboration. When we also say teams, we mean organisations also. So should you say, I'm going to partner with a school to do this, excellent, wonderful. That's not to say that we're looking for only teams. If the applications come in, they will all be judged on their own merit. 
So at this point, I'm about to run into a whole bunch of facts. So what I'd like to do is um, we'll have a wander around. I'm going to give you the guided 20 cent tour of the edge so you can get an idea of what spaces are available to you and what spaces are not available to you, which there aren't that many that are not available to you. So if everyone would like to um, grab it, um, we should be able to close the door if you'd like to leave your stuff in here, which then the door is locked. So it's safe to leave stuff. So that was the tour. For those who are joining us back from the video, you missed out. So now we're just going to move on to the facts, part one, the artists. So I'm just going to go through what are the criteria on each level very quickly, unpack some of them, and then move on to the question and answer section of the evening. One application per person per level. This also includes teams. So if you're part of a team that has applied for the $10,000 one, we would probably frown upon the idea of also applying as an individual. It is open to individuals, groups, and organisations. I shall go back one, sorry, my bad. One application per person per level. If you want to go for the 10 grand, the 3 grand, and the 150, awesome. Hedge your bets. It's open to individuals, groups, and organisations. So as an individual you want to apply or as a team or if you run a school or a large business, we're open to any applications. If you are not working for this, if you are working for the State Library of Queensland, does anyone here work for the State Library of Queensland? You're crap out of luck, you cannot apply. If you used to work for the State Library of Queensland, you can apply. We're saying this for the benefit of people who have catalyst and resident programs, so people who are employed to be here and do coolness. Uh, the Commission applies to all costs associated with the work, including travel. So by cost, we mean the expense of making the work, your wages, should you decide you need to fly somewhere for it, it's included in that fi funding. So if you get the $150 one and decide to take a flight to Sydney, you might not have a lot of budget left. Now, the EDGE will cover the public liability and professional indemnity around the work. So essentially your public liability while the work is in the space, so long as it passes the risk assessments and various safety testings, is covered by us. And it's also covered for $10 million worth of professional indemnity. So should it blow up and burn the building down, $10 million of insurance money. That is not an excuse to try and burn the building down, ladies and gentlemen. The facts to the work needs to be site specific. I think I've stated that a couple of times will be exhibited exclusively at the edge for at least 12 months. By exclusively, we would be saying that it's here, you can't make a copy of it and take it to ACME, so it's ours for 12 months. Once... Experimenter, Anat, which I can name a few other places. Um, I only use ACME because I'm from Melbourne and that's where I'd kind of... I'd ignore me, please. Um, the copyright remains with the artist or artists. We're not having any copyright over it. We're asking for a license to exhibit it. We'd also be asking for a license to document it and hang on to those documentation processes for our own publicity purposes, but not for any profit making. If it uses the electricity, it will need to be tagged and tested. Yes. Can you supply the siding or Yes, we'll actually... Um, Katie wants to know whether or not we would be supplying someone to tag and test. We have a really good tag and test that we use here for all of our gear and he charges about $10 per tag. So he'd ask to be included in the actual costing of the work. But 10 bucks a tag is not too bad. Um, and if it doesn't pass tag and testing, guess what? It won't be exhibited. Um, will be properly risk assessed and associated management plans will be put in place. This is a public artwork. It's in a public space. It's gonna have to undertake Pub, basically assessment as a public artwork. We won't be asking you to figure that out by yourself. You'll be working with staff from the State Library who deal in the public artwork area. And this will also be done before we actually start constructing stuff. <laughs> so as the idea is plan, sit down, do the kind of assessments on it from the outset. It's not a terribly arduous process. Has anyone undertaken that kind of process before? Um, public space, it's annoying. 
there will be one commissioned work f at each level. There'll be one 10 grand, one three grand, one $150. Um, we won't be splitting it. We won't be deciding we're gonna award a couple. It's one of each area. We say that because the question does get asked occasionally. So, the funding. Number one, it is income because it's a commission, not a prize. So you'll have to handle the tax associated with it. So if you get the 10 grand, you're gonna to have to say to your accountant, oh, I got 10 grand this year, please tax me on it. However, the odds are is you'll probably spend most of that 10 grand and you won't have to worry about it because it'll nullify itself. The funding is GST exclusive. So the $10,000 if you are registered for GST is an $11,000 situation. Again, you'll have to handle your own GST. Uh, it is a good idea to run it through an ABM rather than a statement of supplier form. I say that again because putting in a statement of supplier form for $10,000 will get you looked at funny by most accountants and the tax department. Funding for the commission is paid in three parts. One third upfront on approval of a project plan. So as soon as you're happy, we're happy, everyone's happy, a third of the money comes to you. That applies at all levels. So the, you get $50, $1,000 or $3,333, something like that. A third on installation of the work. So once the work's in situ, you get the other third. And then one third at conclusion of the 12 month process. That's that. It's pretty self-explanatory. Now, selection process. Applications are now closing on the 14th of October through the website, not the 7th. We've extended it by a week because we actually came to the conclusion we're actually asking people to jump through quite a lot of hoops. And today is not that far away from the 7th. So we're extending it out by a week. Applications will be shortlisted by the 21st of October and people will be contacted. So between the close of date and us, we'll be assessing them in that week and letting people know who are shortlisted. We will also be letting people know who have not been shortlisted, so we're not going to leave you hanging on the hook going, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Shortlisted applicants will be interviewed in late October. On the website, there is a slightly more specific date. We've just realised they clash with about four other very specific dates that are going to drive us mad. So we're just buying ourselves a week of breathing time there. And the winners will be announced in early November. That announcement will go out on our website and possibly some other places we're not quite sure yet. Interviews will be conducted by internal State Library of Queensland and external reviewers. It's not a completely in-house job. We'll be inviting um, representatives from other arts organisations and creative technology organisations to come on board and help us with that process. We will also be calling potentially for members of the EDGE community to come on board and help us with that process. Mostly because it's a community space, not our space. Ah, the facts, selection criteria. There are five criteria for the selection of the works. Number one is originality, which is not gonna apply to anyone here because you're wonderful creative people, but if I look at an application and say, didn't I see that in New York last year? Guess what? Not original, could be canceled out for that. That's not to say if you have an idea that builds upon someone else's concepts or you came up with an idea that someone else is currently doing, they're gonna say no to it, but we are gonna examine the originality of it. Practicality. Uh, if someone decides they want to have 14 small children strapped to rocket packs floating around the top of the building, could be a problem. <laughs> um, we're also gonna be looking at the capacity for it to be delivered for the price range. So if someone is pitching us a three grand project and we're looking at it going, there's four and a half thousand dollars worth of equipment there and they haven't told us where they're getting it for free from, we're gonna be asking some questions around the practicality of it. We're also going to be looking at work that is potentially publicly dangerous. So should it involve flame or electricity that sparks at people, we will be questioning those kinds of essential safety issues. So if you have any questions regarding that kind of safety, OH&S, how's it going to fit in the space, contact us before your application goes in so we can discuss it further with you. Or we can ask someone else whether or not we can or not. Engagement with and understanding of the audience. That's more recognising that this is a digital culture space, primarily for 15 to 25 year olds. Our average age bracket is the 23 to 25, right through to the 33 kind of market. 
So just understanding like what that audience means and how that kind of work would be interpreted. I can't come up with any examples off the top of my head of what would be a negative one of those because I don't know, but I think we all understand what that means. Responsiveness to space. So we'll be looking at the idea of how does it fit in here. It comes back to that how is it uniquely here and how is it idiosyncratically the edge. And lastly, wow factor. We're not, that does not refer to World of Warcraft factor. We will potentially think about work embedded in World of Warcraft. That would be interesting. Um, but what's going to make people stop and look and experience and explore this work? Um, it's very nice nebulous kind of terms, but we put it in there. Um, we've already elaborated, which brings us to the question and answer section of the evening. Yes, Beck has a microphone. We're going to ask you to speak in the microphone if you have any questions so that the video camera will pick them up on the audio. Anyone have any questions? Gentleman in the front row. I'm just wondering, uh, how long do we have to set up the project after we win the commission? Negotiation. So if you come to us and say, um, with a project plan, with a timeline built into it, we'll discuss that timeline. Beck, do you have anything to clarify on that? No. Excellent. Um, when are you hoping to display the, to have the final showing? So Ideally, for it to be to be completed, when are you hoping for it to be up? Well, February looks to be the date. That is a hoping. Should someone come to us with an ultra compelling argument that requires a little extra room and space, we will discuss that. Cool. This financial year, actually, it'll also be good. Um, do you have installation, like in-kind installation stuff, like drills that drill into those stone walls, or do we have to purchase that? We need budget? to source that externally. We don't have a lot of the high-end tools for masonry. And to be honest with you, we're bolting into these walls. We'd also have to be looking at talking to some structural engineer people to make sure we don't drill into an empty cavity and pull the whole wall down. So all installation stuff you have to get yourself? Um, yes. Okay. That's part of the budget. Then it will be a happy surprise when you say you've got that. Yeah. Having done an installation work where I drilled into a wall and the wall started falling on top of us in the middle of drilling, we would definitely be getting that checked. Yes. That's kind of an extension of that question um, in terms of installation stuff. You've obviously got a lot of uh, projector equipment here, but you don't have like a bank of extra projectors that we can use? No, our projectors are <laughs> basically in use as they are yeah, at the moment. Cool. Um, and as you can imagine, if it's up for 12 months, buy a projector. Yeah. <laughs> so the idea Taking that into account, the idea would be to actually budget all of that. So, yeah. you know, not consider considering that nothing is available for free, so you would have to budget in a hire or a purchase. Yeah, the costs are all inclusive. So any gear you yeah. need, equipment you need, it needs to come out of the budget. Um, there is nothing in our guidelines to say you can't be sourcing additional funding from other sources or sponsorship or partnerships. So also consider that, taking that into account. Um, as we also pointed out, though, when, you were, when we were walking outside, there are speakers existent outdoors. There are projectors, there are digital, um, there are screens. So there is a capacity to use the technology built into the space to contribute to your work. Uh, is there a list of like fire safety things regarding each space or other safety regulations that we can access now so we know what to plan for? That's an interesting question. I need to hunt it down. We do have a fire safety management plan here which would outline those things. Um, when we're looking, the, our fire system here is very sensitive. It picks up dust particles and stuff like that. But we can also discuss with security and the fire safety people about how we can minimise that risk. And also, like space-wise as well. Like, obviously, you need a certain amount of space for fire exits and th egress oh, and things right, like yeah. that. Like, is there? We'll have to look into that. Thank yeah. you for bringing that up. Because the breezeway is the is the primary egress point for the whole building, isn't it? Yeah, you would need to consider. The it is a public space, so people still need to navigate up and down. Minimum egress from the walls is not so much of an issue, but you still need to leave approximately a metre and a half walkway space running down it. The suggestion would be to look at bleeding it over into the garden bed areas because that isn't actually walkway and doesn't cover egress. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, 
I just came into this as um, an animation student. Um, yes. So obviously you're not looking exclusively for digital animation, um, just generally installation artwork? Or We're open to any possibilities. Okay, so it doesn't actually have to be animated technically? No, animate is just the oh, used okay. in that kind of, we have a space we like to activate it and uh, that, animate it. That's cool, yeah, because of course Sorry. I was contacted as an animator saying, oh, you can animate the edge. So I kind of assumed that it was... Um, but if you can animate the edge... That's Rock sweet. On. Okay, so it doesn't have to be animation. It doesn't have to be animation. It doesn't have to be physical installation. It could be screen-based. It could be invisible. It could be on mobile phones. It could be augmented reality. We're actually open to anything and everything. I like it. Except the mime. <laughs> yes. Um, is it possible to um, put it on the website, examples of other public work that's been in the edge? You know how you said, oh, I put this thing in oh, there. Right, so we can something? look for documentation from Design Festival regards yeah, the garden. Yeah. The one that we did in the breezeway actually had no physical footprint. It was just a soundscape built into the speakers and sensors. So we actually attached motion detectors to the walls and stuff like that. So it's not actually very representative of what is and isn't possible. But um, yes, we can see if we can hunt down some images of that kind of stuff and put it up. We actually avoided that just because we were going, we don't want people to think, oh, that's what I have to do. Very true. Anyone else got any questions at all? Just in terms of the kind of work you're looking for, you're probably angling more towards stuff during daytime hours. Like obviously things projector-based, if they're external to the building, you know, obviously at night they're gonna work better, but you'd probably rather something that visitors during the daytime can interact with. <clears throat> There's two arguments. We could say, yes, we're definitely looking for stuff that is available to visitors during the day, and that would be beautiful, because that's our general egress point and kind of busy time. If someone came to us with a pitch for an incredibly compelling piece of art that the entire Brisbane will swarm here to see after hours, we would definitely consider it. Um, at this point, we're not, we're not going to say it has to be during our opening hours. We just want really cool stuff, compelling stuff, wonderful, wacky coolness. Anyone else? Yes. Do you want um, things like electrical usage factored into budgets? Yeah, um, no. If you're using electricity, we will eat that. You will cut. You if you're using it. the internet, so long as you're not streaming gigabytes per day, we'll eat that. Um, around the public safety consultation work and getting stuff signed off on that level, we're going to eat that. Yep. We're wanting you to consider the actual, but you'll need to factor in the fact you're going to have to sit through several long meetings where people are going to point and prod and say, that looks like a sharp edge, we need to do something about that. Yep. But yeah, we'll eat the, those kinds of costs so long as they're not exorbitant. If you're going to be streaming 24 hour a day high definition video out of a room from here to the internet, factor it into your cost. Think about it. Yep. Yeah. Anyone else? Cool. Um, as you, from our website, there is a link for any further information. Uh, currently it says Matthew Fallon. If you send an email to that, it's going to end up in my inbox. I will respond to emails. If you want to have a discussion about it, awesome. Email, give us a call, have a chat, coffee. Coffee's great. Um, but that's it for the formal part of this night. Thank you very much for coming. This is going to go up on the internet for anyone who has any, for other people to look at. Um, Oh, it's in the website. Hang on. Ooh, okay. This is the Edge website for those of you who are not familiar with it. It's built on WordPress. It has a BuddyPress back end. What that means we can do is we can post images directly into the stream. We can link to videos, the sounds, and other things in there. We're very open to someone saying, hi, I've got this really cool idea about what I can do with, that, with a website. We're also interested in looking, exploring the idea of creative concepts that engage people through the internet and community building and stuff like that. So this again is very open. We control this website internally, so it doesn't go through the state library's government controls. So we actually have a lot of leeway with it. That was gonna get to that part. And there's also the, um, the website has a lot of groups involved in it. And I'll see if I can bring up the, animate the edge, animate that. We have got a very, we would encourage you to join the Animate That group on the website, which is where there's a fair bit of chatter around people looking for people to collaborate with. Um, so a lot of our 
users are actually on here. So we encourage you, if you go, I really need someone who can program in Arduino, I need an animator, I need someone who can work in After Effects, I need a welder, I need an electrician. This is a really cool place to come and hang and get some conversation happening and look for people. We also, we as in the staff at the Edge, also comment and contribute to this. So if you have a specific question you'd like to aim at us, whack it on there. Has anyone here used our website before? Alrighty, I'll we'll encourage you to become members. It's a very, very quick process. Jump onto the website, front page, home, um, and sign up. Once you've signed up, you can join the groups. We'd really encourage you to do that. We'd encourage you to explore the site. More information about the project will go up on this website. Other opportunities that come up at the edge also come up here. And that's the end of the plug for the website. Unless Beck can think of anything I've forgotten. No. Thank you very much for coming. It is now 6.32, we're only two minutes over time. Excellent. Thank you.